With Black Ops 6 around the corner, I asked myself the age-old question. Which Call of Duty game is best? Only one way to find out. Replay every single one of them. That's 19 games. I went to Chernobyl, the Reichstag, talked to Kennedy, Reagan, got arrested near Mexico, woke up on Mars, crashed on my flight back, borrowed a jetpack, and filed a complaint at the airport. Long trip, but I'm back home with two answers. There's a clear winner, and Call of Duty is one of the most innovative franchises in the AAA space, and gamers don't know how lucky they are to have it. Bravo Zex, nicht aus. Here's the plan chief. We're doing this in chronological order, starting all the way back in 2003 with the original Call of Duty. I was 10 then. Virgin as bitch. He won't though. Yes, I'm keeping track of sales numbers, playtime, and all major innovations when you see this but none of that will impact its spot on the final ranking. This isn't about how good was it for its time, but how much fun is it today? You got nostalgia? Cool, I got no hair. Bum, let's go. Let me bottom line this for you guys right away. You don't need to play this. I've seen this, I've done this. I got my fair share of beautiful LAN party memories with this one. This is hell. But the only reason anyone should care about it now is to see how far this franchise has come. Some of what I love about Call of Duty today was already in its DNA 20 years ago. A world spanning conflict, over the top set pieces, driving, spot on gunplay, stealth missions, four difficulty settings, NPC names as you hover over them, Captain Price. Yeah, he wasn't always the fuckable little twink you know and love today. You think iron sights have always been standards? I wish the original Call of Duty was one of the first games to implement that. Its biggest competitor at the time, Medal of Honor, God rest its soul, which had already existed since 1999, released Medal of Honor Rising Sun that same year and it was still relying on a basic ass zoom. That was some real innovation and it set the direction for all shooters going forward. Did you know that Jason Statham and the medic dude from Saving Private Ryan are in it? You take point, I'll provide support with the brain gun. It's not surprising it won over 80 Game of the Year awards. Wow. Bro, my grandpa served in World War II. Which side? <laughs> Not to speak. Nonetheless, it's the only COD game next to World War II that has a health bar, which sucks. No sprinting, which sucks even more. Manual saves. The briefings are boring slideshows. There's not one interesting character, let alone anything resembling a narrative. Everything is very small scale, and the only halfway memorable moment that stands out is in the Soviet campaign, when they hand you a clip, but no gun. No program. It sold 4.5 million Ready? copies, took me around six and a half hours to complete, and it goes right to the top. This game is my baby. I love it. It was one of my first Xbox 360 games and the split screen multiplayer was the shit. 40 ans, best map of all time. But okay. Campaign. Call of Duty 2 actually has a very grounded tone. It's less over the top, even less focused on characters than the first game, which is interesting because it almost has the entire cast of Band of Brothers voicing soldiers. What a fascinating little fact. This is truly a you're just another soldier in war type game. You don't ever feel like the protagonist, it's all about immersion. And man, did they crank up the sense of scope. Storming Utah Beach is an absolute highlight. It's obvious where it took inspiration, but who cares? It's fucking amazing. It still holds up today, I think. This time, the British campaign takes place in Africa, which sounds cool at first, but after replaying Playing it, I can tell you it ripped my urinary tract areas. Boring. Yucky. Sadly, there are also a lot of defense segments here, which are always the Achilles heel of any good campaign. On higher difficulty, grenade spam becomes a real problem because you can't throw them back yet. And for some reason, the German soldiers never stop screaming. But they innovated a lot too. We have checkpoints now, no more safe scumming, smoke grenades make a real difference and removing health bars was a massive step for this franchise. And by the way, gaming as a whole. You don't know this cause you're young and sometimes naive. But this was controversial back then. Uh -huh. Regenerative health systems weren't commonplace like today. A lot of people thought that wouldn't work for a more realistic World War II shooter. But look where we are today. They took a risk and it paid off. You didn't have to desperately look around empty buildings for med kids anymore. Just take cover for a moment and back into the action. Amazing. Call of Duty 2 sold 7 million copies, took me 7 hours to finish, and I'll put it a notch above COD 1. Another FPS in World War II. I'll hit her, bitch! This game was a bloody stinker. Fine gaming, fine fucking mess! This was Treyarch's first COD game, and they shit the money bet, my friends. It's the only installment that never made it to PC. Thanks, consoles. 
Thanks Obama. For reasons unknown, the entire game uses a washed out muddy green color palette that makes every mission feel identical. There are no highlights. Couple that with the entire campaign taking place only on the Western Front. No Soviet or Africa campaign. What an L. The checkpoint placement is a disaster. Have fun replaying 20 minute long segments. Mein Arschloch brennt. They removed the audio hit markers from the previous two games. You know the... So the hit feedback is worse. They reuse the exact same annoying voice lines from COD 2. All in all, this is a beautiful representation of the state of first person shooters at that time. Stale, unimaginative, repetitive. Everyone was sick of World War II games, but not all is bad. There are some fun driving segments and we get to play this from the third person, which is very nice. It introduced some brief cutscenes and tries to focus a little more on the characters, but there's nobody worth mentioning. You can finally throw back grenades, which has become standard to this day, and you can cook grenades now. Although in this case, it's not Call of Duty doing the innovating, but rather the catching up. You also have ragdoll physics for the first time, and the funniest new mechanic has got to be these quick time events. At several points in the game, Steiner attacks you and you gotta spam buttons in response. It's laughable. It's immersion breaking. Everyone hated it. But this laid the foundation of where Call of Duty was headed. Scripted moments that interrupt gameplay. Horribly implemented, sure, but it planted the seed that bore fruit to so many incredible moments in the future. It surprisingly sold 7.2 million copies, took me seven hours to finish, and I'll put it right beneath the first game. Fifty thousand people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so-called leaders. Prost to the dust to the west. Yeah. Did you know I used to be an MLG, high risk, high reward, no scope, no friends, Xbox Live Code 4 gamer? Yep, that's me. Thoughts or prayers? Call of Duty 4 is the most influential shooter ever made and put the series on a slingshot trajectory to the top. That is not an exaggeration. Ever since COD 4, every third world country thinks America, America wants, wants to bomb me. me. Doesn't matter if you were around back then or still in your father's sack. It is the blueprint that every other modern day shooter tries to follow and emulate. An industry defining release and the inception of our current understanding of Call of Duty. The leap from this to this cannot be fathomed by a human brain. Every COD game ever since is an iteration of COD 4. It single-handedly catapulted Medal of Honor into irrelevancy. Looking back at history, everything always seems inevitable, but it wasn't. They took a massive risk. Taking a franchise that's already relevant and successful into such a radically new direction can be the nail in your coffin. But Call of Duty 4 came out swinging. Two new grenade types. Sprinting, knifing, night vision. It pioneered wall penetration, a staple of the franchise ever since. Weapon attachments. You think red dot sights, silencers, and skins are normal? It wasn't back then. Breath. COD 4 put that shit on the map. From 17 weapons in COD 3 to a whopping 27. If you played this today, you might say, mm, I don't get it. But it's because you have grown up in a world where the things that COD 4 established have been normalized. But what did I say at the start? The final ranking isn't about how big the impact was, but how much fun it is. And things look pretty fantastic on this end too. Captain Price, Al-Assad just executed President al falani on national television. For the first time, a Call of Duty campaign tries to tell a somewhat coherent story with memorable characters. No more one among many, but special forces this type shit. A global conflict with personalities to root for and against and an actual climax. Is your cell phone? It's an action movie but remains believable. What was laughable cringe the year before has now become absolute peak. The gameplay and locations are diverse and creative. The air support mission sparked real controversy on release and we get to both shoot from a chopper or call one in for backup. I'll never forget the first time I saw a nuclear big bomb go off from the helicopter. But truly, nothing beats the Chernobyl mission. It's not surprising. Iconic. Not just due to the setting and atmosphere or introduction of dog attacks. This was the first time that Call of Duty did a proper stealth mission that worked flawlessly. What can't they pull off? COD 4 sold over 20 million copies. Took me a little over four hours to complete and it's the new number one. Does it get any better than this? It's 2008 and Treyarch is back with a vengeance after the shit stick that was caught through. This game is proof that second chances are important. World at War stands out as the darkest in the whole franchise. Look at the main menu. Destroy the child, corrupt them all, 
and scared, scared for me. It is an incredibly unique game and brought many more firsts to Call of Duty. World at War introduced gore. And not a little bit, a lot of karate. Legs get blown off, pieces of flesh fly through the sky, heads explode, guts are hanging out. It is the most brutal Call of Duty game to date. You can impale people with bayonets, turn Japanese into tempura. Enemies display new unique behaviors. They hide in trees, they charge you, they surprise attack you from underneath. Treyarch truly achieved the impossible, making World War II interesting to play again. Finally, giving us the Pacific Theater and basically remaking the storming of the Reichstag from Cod 1. Which do you think will lead us home? Writing about this war or fighting it? The intro briefings are incredible. The soundtrack, the best in the franchise. Make sure you keep all of us we get a good old tank mission, a turret mission, and although the sniper section can't keep up with Chernobyl, having to listen to plane engines to drown out your shots was super creative. And it introduced Reznov, who I just learned is voiced by Gary Oldman. Now this place once echoed with conversations of friends and lovers. No longer. Cool! Call of Duty is the same every year! Shut your mouth. I will send the Strudelpeter to your house to make a little bit of snip snap to your eggplant. It's Maschara, spread by fucking pussies. Only play multiplayer. This franchise has always innovated massively with each installment, and we're talking yearly releases. Other games are four years apart and feel identical. Overall, World at War is not able to compete with Infinity War in terms of gun feel, and obviously, story wise, there isn't much here. If I had to pick a favorite mission, I'd say nothing beats Storming the Reichstag. This entire level is mind bending. Call of Duty World at War sold 17 million copies, took me around five and a half hours to finish, and it goes right below COD 4. This is entirely personal preference, like this whole video, by the way. It's subjective. Look it up. It's in the dictionary under S, like sex. Hi. This is the quintessential Call of Duty experience. They took everything that worked in Call of Duty 4 and cranked it up to a gazillion. Run faster, shoot harder, jump further. Where to begin, where to stop, what's left to say except it's perfetto. Even the way it begins with the music by Hans Zimmer. It's like the game saying, witness me, witness me. It's the only COD campaign where I can't pick a favorite mission cause they're all bangers. A perfectly paced mix of intensity and calmer moments. Is it the mission with soap, climbing the glacier, introducing heartbeat sensors, ending with a snowmobile ride, a perfect level from start to finish? Welcome to the 141. Best hand-picked group of warriors on the planet. Is it the favela in Brazil, where Soap slow-mo dives onto a car? <laughs> Is it the one where the Russians invade the suburbs in West Virginia? It introduces player-guided missiles. I don't want to go through every mission, but people, the highlights in this one just don't end. A plane crashing into a mansion, starting a mission underwater and infiltrating an oil rig, introducing slow-mo breaches. Exfiltrating a Soviet gulag castle with Captain Price. Introducing riot shields, fighting at the capital, only for a huge EMP that you can see go off from space. Shut down all electronic devices and then you see helicopter, helicopter, helicopter falling down from the sky. Que ridiculo. The airplane boneyard, the upside down upsiling with knife, the boat on the river, the final fight. And did I mention remember no Russian? I played this as a teenager and thought, war is hell. <laughs> The epicness, the over-the-topness, it's daring. It's a statement, Jezalami. We got tons of new attachments, tons of new weapons. Akimbo, Zemtex. Whoever was in charge of this campaign has the largest cock in recorded history. Tell me where to find it and I'll suck it. Yeah. yeah. Suck it. Yeah. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it and I'll suck it. Characters are given more screen time. There's more space for dialogue. The conflict feels believable, like actual World War III. Bit too believable, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. Uh, it shied away from nothing. It's the first Call of Duty that came with a content warning, but sadly also the only one that ever needed it. They tried many times to recreate that level of controversy, but it never worked again. Modern Warfare 2 is actually the reason why this is a campaign ranking only. The crazy amount of killstreaks and gadgets ruined the multiplayer for me. These things are becoming so disconnected. I like continuity. And if I considered Warzone, Zombies, PvP, PvE, Co-op, this video would never end. So jokes on you. Or somebody. It sold 25 million copies, took me 5 hours to complete, and it's our new king. For now.
Did you know Black Ops is the highest selling Call of Duty game to this date with over 32 million units sold? It's crazy. Shit. This was an absolute wild card. It is so unique in all the best ways. It was the first Call of Duty game to tell a well-rounded story from start to finish. Not just glimpses of a war, not just cool characters that happen to be there, but are core to the story. I felt like everyone was watching us watching me. It is a very narrative driven game and that was a big departure for the franchise. Every past game still put the global conflict first, even Modern Warfare 2, but Black Ops put the plot first. And I love this whole Vietnam. B7s dropped us in front of Bufuck. Cold War, MK Ultra redacted, Forrest Gump music conspiracy vibe it went for and it nailed it. The reveal at the end is awesome. It brought us Woods, Hudson, Mason. The numbers Mason, what do they mean? You get it? <laughs> Explain it. Black Ops carved out its own space within the Call of Duty franchise, and there's a good reason why we're getting its sixth installment this year. Treyarch is closing the gap to Infinity Ward, yet still the weapons feel a little weaker, smaller, and not quite as punchy. It has some cool driving, diving, and guided tank missile segments, building on what Modern Warfare 2 created, but for the first time ever, we're able to commit war crimes from a helicopter. <laughs> it's crazy how this franchise keeps creating new mechanics that only exist for 10 minutes and feel awesome to play. For the first time since COD 4 implemented sprinting, they innovated on player movement by adding the dolphin dive. Overall, Black Ops has the most diverse campaign yet. We can drive and shoot from a boat. We command a squad from a plane and instantly switch to ground level. Wait, no. Enemy has stopped in front of the house. We get a wingsuit movement, a crossbow, a minigun, and some outstanding missions that are among the best in the franchise. Shield, and she still protects him? Meeting Kennedy, Kowloon, Nihoma, South Park Elementary. The World War II flashback, but my absolute favorite is the Deer Hunter mission with Woods. You should, yeah, you should. You can't kill me. It's so intense. Oh, makes me want to get some fuck. It took me five hours to finish, and it goes right underneath the goat. It's close, though. It doesn't take the most powerful nations on Earth to create the next global conflict. Just the will of a single man. Modern Warfare 3 had big shoes to fill, and for the first time, the shoe don't fit. Listen, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has some of the strongest and most epic standalone moments in the entire franchise. If all you want is over the top craziness, it delivers more than any other installment with an incredible density of insanity. The subway train crash. A plane cuts in half while you're in it. Dodging warships on a boat while seeing New York City burn. The Eiffel Tower collapses. It's cinema. Location-wise, it also doesn't hold back. We storm the beaches of Hamburg. Ich hab Sachen erlebt, du hast Sachen gehört. Halt die Augen auf Matrose, meine Stadt ist gestört. <laughs> We go to the Himalayas, Dubai, Sierra Leone. It's a non-stop thrill ride, but that's exactly the issue. Modern Warfare 3's missions are given no breathing room. Big things need space. For some reason, levels cut away and fade to black very quickly. Shit goes bonkers, boom, done. Mission over. Come on. Briefing, next mission. Thank you very much. It virtually chases you from set piece to set piece and never allows it to settle. Never allows the player to digest what he's just seen. Therefore, it all feels incredibly rushed. At some point, I stopped taking things in. I got numb to it. That's the problem. Machiavelli said you can only admire the mountain peak from the valley. Without the valley, there is no mountain. Okay. It also sidelines its characters. There are barely any heart-to-heart -heart moments. Neither Price nor Soap are given time to be cool, killing off any emotional weight that had been built in Modern Warfare 2. That's why Soap's death feels cheap. No, 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 Soap! No, no, no! A character dying can work really well, if it makes sense, if it's deserved. It. But you didn't care about him in this game. You forgot Soap, and when you remembered him, you decided to kill him to get a reaction. Fucking lazy. Ooh. You get people like Idris Elba on board, and he doesn't have a single memorable moment. Innovation-wise, the disappointment continues. You can now switch between two sights on a gun. Okay, fine. And there is a short but extremely cool Zero-G segment. Who would have thought this would foreshadow so much? But that's it. That is the least a COD installment ever innovated between releases so far. The entire game is douset in grayish color and the graphic content warning feels like a desperate attempt to catch people's attention. What moment are they even referring to? The truck exploding? You know she gets that from you. My toilet sees worse terror attacks on a daily basis. My favorite mission is right at the start, fighting through Wall Street. Obviously the gunplay remains Call of Duty perfection. It sold 30 million copies, took me almost five hours to finish, and hold on to your seats, 
it goes a notch above World at War. If you think I'm wrong, ask yourself, when was the last time you played through every single campaign? Huh? Your mind is clouded by nostalgia. And since this is an old franchise, probably Dementia 2. I have it all fresh. Right here, buddy. Right here. Black Ops 2 shall change what Call of Duty means in the eyes of players forever. It is an insanely ambitious game. Es hat sich stets bemüht. Where Modern Warfare 3 failed, Black Ops 2 went balls to the wall. No. No, you are and always will be a true enemy. You like the cinematic story-driven nature of Black Ops 1? Let's be the first COD game with different endings depending on player choices. Let's be the first COD game to allow for loadout customization before missions. Let's dabble in sci-fi for the first time. Invisibility, futuristic weapons, sticky wall climbing gloves, a more refined wingsuit segment, horse riding instead of tanks, and jeeps, and drones, and jets. It's crunk. Let's switch between future and the past to keep things fresh and give them a villain to remember. For me, a great Call of Duty has to strike a fine balance between making the conflict believable and having interesting characters. You know, if this wasn't an op, I believe I'd give myself a little hot chick action here. If things lean too far on the believability side, like in Car 2, we have no cool characters or memorable moments. And if things lean too far on the character side, it starts to feel like a James Bond or Marvel movie. I don't buy it anymore. And me so sorry. But Black Ops 2 sadly goes too far on the character side for me. Hey, I still want a geopolitical conflict to be at the center, not this soap opera drama between Mason Woods, Hudson and Menendez. It's about his sister. He killed my father to get to you. You killed my sister? Okay, time for World War 3. It's all a bit too contrived. I'm also not a fan of putting characters from a concluded story like Black Ops 1 back into the microwave to reserve them. And let's not forget the disastrous Strike Force missions that are a new low point for the franchise as a whole. These are complete filler, but the requirement for the best ending. Massive L. Other innovations such as equipment selection rarely make a return to the franchise for good reason. It's not necessary. You always pick up different weapons as you go. Wasting the player's time on menu screens that have very little impact is redundant. And unfortunately, this is the first time that I don't enjoy the guns in a Call of Duty game. So far, most guns have either been historical or based on things everyone knows. But in Black Ops 2, it looks like an indistinguishable soup of generic quasi-futuristic firearms. I get it, you're a crazy gun nut and you know exactly what which gun is based on. But for me, impossible. Black Ops 2 is one of the most formative COD games and it took huge risks. But I don't think it all panned out that well. It sold 25 million copies, took me five hours to complete and it takes the spot below World at War. There is definitely no love lost between gamers and Call of Duty ghosts. And you know what? I get it. The story is laughably absurd. I feel like I'm watching a story about some retarded, retarded wizard, wizard in the forest. forest. The world building is wholly unconvincing. It doesn't seem like a real conflict at all. An earth shattering near apocalyptic world war leaves major cities in ruins and we never hear from the president or the army, but it's just five ghosts trying to find an ex ghost. Who gives a fish? Shit. There are more important things. The voice acting has severe misses. But your father's not there anymore. This whole time, you, you were one of them, you were a ghost. Try the Where's my dad? Where's my dad? He doesn't exist anymore. Dad, so you were a ghost the whole time. Bruh! The betrayal moment is unintentionally funny and the entire plot never makes sense. We neither get cool cutscenes, nor briefings, but animated James Bond intros. It no longer builds cool characters through gameplay moments, but it wants to forcefully uh. assert the coolness. Every piece of dialogue is dead set on convincing you that these ghosts are really fucking cool. You were never one of us. You're not a ghost. No, he just said he's not a ghost. They're, they're, they're so cool. They're so cool, okay? Please clap. No, they're not. They're clowns. Just like in Modern Warfare 3, missions cut away too fast. There's a horribly dragged out helicopter mission. But guys, other than that, ghosts delivered some amazing moments and creative new ideas. I'm shocked. All I knew about this game before playing it is that it had dogs and that it sucked. So I expected a gimmicky mess. Turns out it's fun, it works well, and it's only there for like two missions. <laughs> We finally don't just get to dive underwater, but shoot too. The gun feels satisfying and punchy. Nice work. The Zero-G space mission is fantastic. There's a very brief segment where you get a strobe light. 
That was so cool. And the main villain has a crashing display moment is epic. Ghosts also enhance player movement by adding sliding. Now, I don't know if Naughty Dog was inspired by Call of Duty Ghosts, but at several points throughout it, it reminded me of The Last of Us 2. I'm serious. You have the overgrown cityscape on the West Coast, the destroyed Santa Barbara style buildings, the flooded warehouse where you go prone when you dive, the red flares, the stadium that's been repurposed to a base. The similarities are striking. My favorite mission is where you can see the dam explode on the horizon and it floods the city while you're in it. That is finger licking good. Call of Duty Ghosts is a story mess, but the gameplay makes up for a lot. It sold 28 million times, took me five hours to complete, and I'll take a deep breath. If this makes you feel angry, you obviously haven't watched enough Shurangi videos. It goes one above Black Ops 2. Sumimasen. A new studio has entered the race. It's, it's a sledgehammer. Hammer. Guys, I thought I was gonna hate this. Legit. I do not like futuristic stuff, but I gotta press F to pay respects. Advanced Warfare is fantastic. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Just the way it starts. You get shot down from a capsule into South Korea, and the action is spot on. The guns embrace the futuristic tone and feel... It does away with the classic heads-up display and replaces everything by holographic projections on the guns like in Dead's Biz. Love it. You got four new grenade types. Advanced Warfare also does the biggest leap we've seen so far in terms of traversal. Jetpack and grappling hook. Especially the last one is a joy to use in the stealth mission where you can now whistle to lure enemies and for the first time there's an actual detection meter further refining the stealth gameplay. I am wet wipes! Now remove the word wipes. These mechanics are also way more subtle than I expected. Not dominant, but well integrated. You got riot shields that follow you and a bunch of fun driving and tank segments. My favorite mission by far is the one in Antarctica. You start on a jetpack, planting bombs on a plane, then you dive onto the surface, then the surface explodes and you slip into the glacier and have to fight your way out. Type one in the comments if that ever happened to you. But where Advanced Warfare really elevated the franchise to a true new rabbit is in its storytelling. This is the first Call of Duty game with proper pre-rendered cutscenes that look gorgeous to this very day. You gentlemen did a hell of a job out there. Lagos has opened up fantastic opportunities for Atlas. The story itself is, I'd say, predictable, but well told. The world building is excellent, and the scope of the conflict remains clear throughout. I do think it drops the ball at the end, though. Kevin Spacey basically won, but then you get a super robot suit and kill him? It's, it's, it's underwhelming. And I'm not a fan of the small upgrades you do between missions. It's not a big deal, but I find that every time Call of Duty campaigns make the player spend time on menus, it harms the flow of the game. Advanced Warfare is barely six hours long. No need for RPG mechanics. It sold 22 million copies, and it takes the top three. Black Ops 3. Ach Gottle. Here we go. This game has a very loyal fan community to this day because of something related to the multiplayer or zombies don't know, don't care. This is by far the shittiest campaign of them all. It's not bad for a Call of Duty game, but just outright Playing this was painful. Brain? Go boom. The story is an incomprehensible disaster. Characters are boring. Superpowers are unrewarding and unnecessary. Advanced Warfare did no UI. Now we get UI spam. Weapons are 3D printed, AI generated banalitäten. They feel completely weight and powerless. I mean, what the fuck is going on? When does it end? It's the COD game with the worst gunplay. It introduces bullet sponge enemies, doubles down on upgrades and wastes your time with a boring hub area. Wow. This game is a mockery of everything Black Ops is supposed to be. It's got nothing in common with it. What a disgusting, pointless, embarrassing, no context, no clarity, dragged out fucking catastrophe. If I have to hear the words Frozen Forest one more time, I'm gonna Minecraft myself in GTA Online. We still got a chance. Nein, ich, ich will nicht mehr. Hör auf! Noteworthy changes are a new realistic difficulty mode and a character creator, which adds a nice extra layer of meaninglessness to the game. Black Ops 1 was the cream of the crop. Black Ops 3 can sit on sit on this knob. The one redeeming thing I can say is that the World War II Inception mission was visually impressive. That's it. Now throw this game back into the fucking poobel. It somehow still managed to sell a whopping 27 million copies. Took me almost seven torturous hours to finish and takes the new bottom spot. Fuck this game. <laughs> Inf 
Infinite Warfare. What a title. For many players, a sad reflection of where Call of Duty was headed. To infinity and beyond. But you know what? The game's low-key cute. Like me, right? To my 4% female audience and gays. Am I hot? A little? A little hot? Oh, whatever, whatever. Infinite Warfare is a logical continuation of the past few games, but the die has been cast. People were sick of the future, which explains the devastatingly low sales numbers of 13.6 million. The reason I personally don't hate hate it is cause it's a farewell party that goes all out. An unapologetic excursion to the far away intergalactic future and reminded me a lot of Starfield, but with better gunplay, handmade environments, and some cool characters. Who could forget Conor McGregor's and Lewis Hamilton's award-winning performances? No joke, they're in there. Until we meet again. Semper Fi Marine. But that Salta girl is actually pretty cool. Or Slay. Sadly, the protagonist is as forgettable as the antagonist. Jon Snow pops up right at the start, only to never be seen again until two thirds of the game when you unceremoniously kill him. What the fick? What was that? Who even was he? Especially because the world building was decent. People of Earth and people of Mars are beefing. But sir, by the time there's war, it's too late. The scale and importance of this war is contextualized well. But the distance gave way to a movement with no connection to the place we call home. The stakes are clear, but man does the payoff drop the wall. It feels incredibly rushed and unfinished. Gunplay is solid, Infinity War don't miss in this regard. Hey. We even get some Doom-esque BFGs and a robot takeover hack. It's fine, I guess. This time, dogfights in space are a core pillar of the gameplay loop, and I gotta say, they just don't feel great. They overstay their welcome and are obvious filler. Although there is a very cool moment where you fly towards a space station, then jump out of your ship and seamlessly transition into gunplay. Super cool. We get six difficulty settings this time around, but overall Infinite Warfare looks more innovative than it actually is. It's very by the book and almost all of its mechanics have existed in some form or another in a previous game. It also falls short in an area where Infinity Ward usually does well. Cinematic moments and highlights, they are noticeably lacking. Sure, some of the planets look cool at first, but space stations all look the same. Missions feel repetitive, shooting robots is boring, and once the credits roll, you're not left with a lot to remember. The only standout is the Geneva mission where the war breaks out. Good stuff. Infinite Warfare took me five and a half hours to finish, and it joins our ranking below Call of Duty 2. Back to the roots. Thank you. A much needed grounding for the franchise after getting a little too lost in the stars. Call of Duty World War II looks absolutely mind blowing. Ihr seid zum Arbeiten hergekommen und das werdet ihr auch tun. I would voice a good Hitler. Holy crap. And it's not just the cutscenes or the campaign map. The in game graphics can stand side by side with any AAA game of today. It features the most gripping portrayal of D Day ever seen in a game. Gameplay wise, it played it too safe while also making huge advancements for the series. It's a paradox. In order to make it clear that Call of Duty is normal again and to bang on some nostalgia, they reintroduced health bars like in the first game. Was that a mistake? Yes. Does it make a difference? Not really. It's barely even noticeable. You either carry plenty of medkits on your own or you command your squad members to heal you, which is a new mechanic that also doesn't quite stick the landing and clutters the UI. The plane controls sadly suck again. Flipping over tables is fun, but you do that maybe twice in the whole campaign. And just like Call of Duty 3, we only get a Western front. You can tell that Glenn Schofield went for a Band of Brothers vibe here. Especially the drama between Pearson and Turner adds a personal touch to an otherwise basic World War II story. The acting is amazing, but I found it at times a little much. Our instructions were to take this hill. You should for there us. wasn't time. What about our- We had orders! <clears throat> Oh. Not sure if I bought all of it. Also, the conclusion left a lot to be desired. Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3, and even Advanced Warfare didn't deliver us a lot of over-the-top craziness that the franchise used to be known for. Well, this is World War II's response. Not gonna lie, I love this shit. Best mission in the game. But the most innovative aspect of it is the introduction of a social stealth mission that has dialogue, branching paths, exploration, and a much refined stealth meter. Fräulein, ihre Tasche! Deine Papiere, you the... Joke. That's from Schindler's List, okay?
I like America. America. Call of Duty plays like an immersive sim in these levels, further swallowing up even more genres and looking damn good doing so. It sold 20 million copies, took me six hours to complete, and takes the spot between Ghosts and Black Ops 2. The rules have changed. There's a fine line between right and wrong. And somewhere in the shadows. This game reinvigorated my love for this franchise. The hype it built with that trailer was done and dusted, out of this world. Bravo 6, going dark. It's my favorite trailer of all time, and holy cow did the final product deliver on that promise. Clear House is the best Call of Duty mission of all time. Bravo 6, moving to the first floor. Infinity Ward wanted to make up for the mediocrity of their previous installments and decided to raise the bar yet again for all shooters to come. The new Modern Warfare trilogy has the best, most punchy, and most rewarding gunplay of any modern day shooters today, bar none. Yes! It is the single biggest leap the franchise ever made in that regard. We can mount weapons on cover. We can reload while aiming down sights. We can hold the gun sideways, which makes me feel like a real G. Pow, 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 Jimmy, I right here. I shove the chopstick up your ass. It is such an incredibly gritty, dirty, and uncompromising game in its tone. <laughs> the poor fucker with the bomb vest. Open! I wanna see my partner. I wanna see my Can you help me? I'm trying. Let me see my girl. Shooting this dude in front of his wife and kid. Differentiating between civilians and enemy combatants is a constant struggle and it makes everything feel so much more intense. Just like Captain Price said. We get dirty and the world stays clean. That's the mission. Man, that son of a gun stole the show. Every time he talks, I come to But it's not just him. Characters feel real. The vibes of this game are immaculate and the most consistent of any Call of Duty game. But it doesn't end here. Modern Warfare introduces a new mechanic of guiding an NPC safely through enemy lines. It's all right. Diversifies the gameplay loop, just like the wire cutting or turning your head to not get waterboarded. I didn't know it was that easy. Just turn your head, bro. The flashback missions where you play as a little kid might not be the most interesting gameplay-wise, but it's still a first to be controlling a child in a Call of Duty game. Now, for the sake of fairness, I don't think it's all perfect. This game definitely has some low points. Defending the hill is boring as hell. The open-ended mission where you need to infiltrate three mansions at night was definitely filler, but the biggest sin is the introduction of juggernauts. Huge mistake. I don't know why they did that, and they even kept it for the upcoming games. Guys, this is not how you increase the difficulty for a realistic shooter. It's not an RPG. We don't need health bars or bullet sponge enemies. Hate to see it. Call of Duty Modern Warfare sold over 30 million copies, takes around five hours to complete, and it's kicking Advanced Warfare off position three. The race remains tight. This game should be called Black Ops 3. Why Cold War? Now the subtitle has a subtitle. Just retcon that old piece of shit because this actually feels like Black Ops again. Cold War, undercover secret operations and conspiracies. And let me tell ya, this is an outright fantastic story and Treyarch's redemption. Now. Yes, the gunplay is worse than in Modern Warfare, significantly. Yes, they innovated very little on the action. You can take human shields and there's a bow and arrow, but the way Cold War tells the story is unprecedented for the franchise. The warehouse in Berlin? Macht mal Lärm Berlin! One of the few hub areas that work. It doubles down on dialogue options and impactful choices. There's optional content that doesn't feel like a waste of time. And it takes heavy inspiration from Call of Duty World War II social stealth segment by enhancing them in quality and quantity. There's a mole within the KGB. You can pick locks Skyrim style. You look for fingerprints. You have to decipher clues and solve puzzles. This is a spy thriller that strikes the perfect balance between a character-focused plot and high stakes through a global conflict. The entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Adler is such a giga chat, mate. I still do not like how they keep recycling Hudson, Mason, and Woods. It feels incredibly forced and unnecessary, but hey, they are a selling point to people, I guess. You wouldn't have this problem if you'd done your job. Killed Perseus in Vietnam. Careful, Hudson. Next time, I might not stop Woods. Cold War's campaign offers everything an FPS should deliver. You get ridiculous over-the-top moments like the plane chase in Turkey. A 
flying section that plays well again for a change, a Berlin wall mission that feels so goddamn immersive. How these devs are able to continuously create snapshots of historical locations is beyond me. We even get to revisit a Black Ops 1 location, but backwards. I usually don't like rehashing old shit, but that was the best way to do it. My favorite mission has got to be that underground Russian facility where they rebuild American streets. Sensationnel. Black Ops Cold War sold over 30 million copies, took me about five and a half hours, and it takes the spot right below Modern Warfare. Can you believe I was actually excited to try this? I saw some clips on YouTube beforehand and I thought, man, this looks insane. Why are people hating on this? But oh my God, the rumors are true. Vanguard is scheiße. Do you speak Japanese? The story follows a ragtag group of retards from different allied countries as they get interrogated by the Nazis <laughs> and then you play through each character's past. Now that sounds cool on paper, but it just doesn't work. I thought you wanted to know about our team. Answer me now or our deal is off. It is by far the most boring Call of Duty campaign of all time. Black Ops 3 was shit, but Vanguard is a clown show, a circus. It never builds momentum. The pacing is dreadful. Flashbacks are only interesting if they tell us something about the present. But all of this is out of context, irrelevant shit. <laughs> The Australian dude's missions in Africa are unbearable, I tell you. Unbearable! This is proof that beautiful cutscenes, gorgeous in-game graphics, that Call of Duty spot-on gunplay, and the return of some pretty heavy gore can save a campaign if it tells no story and if the characters are mundane, cardboard cutout bitches. This has zero credibility. It's World War II, but the subplot is a joke, the stealth segments are a drag, and the flying segment makes me want to commit Logan Paul. No! There are almost no noteworthy innovations except ordering attacks, and you can climb a wall all Far Cry style, like three times. <laughs> Bowsers, don't judge a book by its cover, because Vanguard's cover is remarkable. But right from the first page, you are greeted by a disjointed mess that has nothing interesting to say or memorable to show you. This was a chore to play. I'm flabbergasted that it still managed to ship 30 million copies. It took me a little over five hours to finish, and it goes right to the bottom. It's a shit tier game. Good Goodbye. Boy. Modern Warfare 2, that's a big name. You better do it justice. I played it on release and liked it, and I replayed it now and loved it. Modern Warfare 2 never reaches the high points of Modern Warfare, and it has lower low points than Modern Warfare, but on average, the quality of the missions is quite a bit higher than Modern Warfare. You get what I'm saying? Like higher average, but lower median. Is that correct? Mathematicians, let me know. The locations are more diverse. The brief Amsterdam segment still looks like real life, except where the hoes at. The gameplay is more varied and combines almost everything the series has come up with to this point. We get an air support mission, a sniping mission with price, two notches, guiding an NPC, social stealth, dialogue options, driving with the freedom to switch cars, sleeping dog style, like a Lamoa. And I just have to say, an absolutely brilliant stealth mission where for the first time in the franchise, you can loot and craft gadgets and items. That whole mission is a masterpiece, so creative. Remember the one where you have to dodge the containers cause Wiggly Wiggly, sheesh came up. But that level at the Mexican border beats it. It's in my top five, a real standout highlight. We get some cool new characters like Valeria and uh, Alejandro. And who the fuck do you think you are, cabrón? But I just have to say, I fucking hate Ghost. He is so cringe. Holy shit. I just can't. Every time I see him, it breaks my immersion. Just some Otto who wears a ghost mask when he hangs out with his friends. <laughs> who finds this cool? Who the modern warfare games go for a rounded and serious tone, but this dude sticks out like a minderwertiger Hund. And I mentioned low points before. Sadly, this campaign features a boss fight against the tank. Just a bad idea. This is Call of Duty. We don't need boss battles like that, okay? The driving segment has an epic set piece moment where you dangle upside down. <laughs> but overall drags on for too long, just like the air support mission. It lacks refinement. Overall, this was more than a worthy successor to Modern Warfare and one of the best entries in the franchise. There are no public sales numbers, unfortunately. It took me six and a half hours to finish and it sits next to its brother. Here we are, almost present day. Everyone hates Modern Warfare 3, except me. I love it. Joke. 
It takes less than four hours to finish, but I admittedly rushed through the open world segments. And let's talk about them. Anyone who says, yeah, but it was supposed to be DLC, doesn't understand that nobody cares. I do not care for the reasons behind the reasons why a product is bad. If you have $5 and 10 minutes to make GTA 6, it's gonna have a shitty story, shitty characters, shitty world, shitty voice acting, shitty gameplay, shitty everything. These are the reasons why the game is bad. The funding and the time are the reasons behind the reasons. Like Jackie Chan said, whatever you do, do the best you can because the film live forever. No, because you know that they're raining and the actor don't have time. I said, would you go to every theater to tell the audience? No, the audience see on the theater, good movie, bad movie, that's all. These are a low point for the franchise as a whole. They have nothing redeeming and it's a stain on the series. They should have shelved this installment, but it is what it is. Most of the missions are filler. The facial animations are a flop. Oh, you were chasing your own tail before I stepped in. Give it to us then. I guess you can call those open-ended missions innovative, but they suck. New isn't always good, of course. We have color-coded rarities for weapon cases for some fucking reason, and even the game's story is a huge waste of time. It introduces Makarov, but ends on a cliffhanger and retarded character death that nobody needed. What a waste! Oh, I am not gonna beg for my life. Wouldn't do you any good. This is the only COD game that launched as a faulty product, so to speak. It just feels wrong. Like a stitched together, money-grabby compromise. I'm sure there are tons of passionate people at the studio who beg the higher-ups not to release this. But hey, what can you do? There are no reliable sales numbers again, but you might be surprised at where I'll rank this. You have to remember one thing. It's still based on the foundation of modern warfare, meaning the gunplay is top of the class. Also, there are about four missions in here that do deliver that Call of Duty epicness. Freeing Makarov was awesome. The stadium was amazing. The last mission is fun and the very brief plane segment is the highlight of this game. Let me go, I need you to that phone! Give it to me, give me the phone! I wish they did more with that. It delivers what I love about Call of Duty, just too little of it, and mixed in with the worst missions of the franchise. Ultimately, it takes the spot number 15. Call of Duty foot letters. Oh, and that's it, we're done. Modern Warfare 2 is still, after all these years, the best Call of Duty campaign ever made. Now, name another AAA franchise with a yearly release calendar that innovates as much as Call of Duty. You can't, I'll wait. And if your answer is, yeah, but they got four studios rotating, so? So, why don't they have four studios working on your favorite games? Call of Duty campaigns take huge risks almost every year and dare to be different in ways that go from setting, tone, character, story, genres, mechanics, guns, movement, which is why I'm happy that the multiplayer plays it safe each year. That's what makes the money. Milk those Warzone and zombie players for all their worth. More Nicki Minaj and Snoop Dogg skins, please. Whatever sells, because they take that money to finance and craft the much more expensive, unique, and creative single player experiences. The only question left is, where does Black Ops 6 fit into all of this. Well, I'm reviewing it, so stay tuned and subscribe to find out. This video was a shit ton of work, so please, I would appreciate it if you, yeah, if you, if you did something, just do something to help me out. Something, anything, something. Thanks for watching. Antonio out. <laughs>